We need to produce more food because populations are increasing and people are demanding better diets. And we need to do that from the same agricultural footprint. We can't bring new land into agriculture without major problems for biodiversity and greenhouse gases. So sustainable intensification is the idea that we need to produce more food from the same agricultural footprint, but has less detrimental effects on the environment. Now, some people see that as a contradiction in terms. How can you produce more food and yet not have more bad effects in the environment? To me, it's the research challenge how we do that. How we do that by produce it by being more efficient in our use of inputs and trying to find win-wins where they exist. Sustainable intensification as an idea has been around for a decade or so, but what we don't know is how much it's actually being carried out. And what the study showed, it looked at major sustainable intensification where people are beginning to think how, how they can redesign agricultural systems in order to produce better outcomes. And we found that actually there is more agriculture embracing the idea of sustainable intensification than I think most people thought. Around about a quarter of all farms are thinking seriously about how to carry out this new agenda. Global food security is a big challenge, given the increase in populations, given that people, and it's a good thing, are welfare and demanding better diets. I am optimistic, but I'm optimistic if we do four things. One is produce more food sustainable, sustainably. That's sustainable intensification, as we're talking about. But that will not be sufficient alone. We also have to think about consumption, and particularly those of us who live in the rich world have to think about how we can consume less. We need to reduce waste, but reducing waste alone is not a silver bullet. And then finally, we need to think about the governance of the food system, how we allow poor people to have the resources they need to buy food, and how we make use of the advantages of different countries to produce food and to send that food to areas which are not self-sufficient in food.